Hey guys, welcome back to another Call of Duty Modern Warfare video as we take a look at Tuesday, June 30th, update 1.23. For those of us here on PC, the update was around 35.7 gigabytes, and of course for you guys on console, around 3.5 gigabytes. Starting it off, we now have the new 200 player Warzone game mode for quads. It has been quite some time that we had heard that the team would be expanding the player base up to 200 so it will be interesting to see how well the servers perform while we're in warzone we now can get a new contract called the supply run when you pick it up it will direct you to the nearest buy station and you have to reach it within a certain time limit it will provide us with certain discounts on those purchases so it will be interesting to see i'm guessing the team is kind of wanting to funnel players to a certain location but this should add a new ambience to the game while we're in Warzone, and I assume Plunder, we will have a new item called the Spotter Scope, which apparently is part of the spawn table, as well as perhaps found within crates and when completing certain types of contracts. This new scope is a high-powered no-glint scope that is reusable and will allow players to scan the environment as well as mark enemies without being detected. Now, some have said that this is going to be a rather powerful item and should be a little more harder to obtain. But as far as we can tell now, it is just kind of a standard spawn within the game as typical loot as well as items that you can find within crates and perhaps even when you complete a contract. With this update and of course each Tuesday we get a new playlist and here in multiplayer we see that we have ground war, gunfight blueprints, team defender which is a capture the flag mode where only one team will have the flag at a time so those that have the flag will have to defend it and of course the other team will be trying to get that from you. Then we have the Cheshire Park 24-7 which is the new map that has been added in a mosh pit game mode and everyone's favorite shoot the ship so there we have it so everyone should be quite content that shoot the ship is back and of course we have a new map not an extensive list of game modes but nonetheless a nice one at least we will have a new map as well as everyone's favorite shoot the ship Moving over to the Warzone Battle Royale side, we have a bit of a minimalist UI here, and I kind of like it. When you hover over Battle Royale, you'll see that you'll have each of your selections here, as well as your selection for Blood Money. So, for those looking for less clutter on the screen, at least on the PC side, I kind of like this new design. And with this mid-season update, we see an introduction of a new sniper rifle, the Ritek AMR. If you guys want to do the standard unlock, it will require three quick scope kills using a sniper rifle or marksman rifle in 15 different matches. Or you can go straight over to the store and get the weapon pack Lost Soul and pick it up. It will be 1200 COD points. Now keep in mind that it will come with these particular attachments, but you will still need to level up the weapon to get the additional attachments and items that come with the gun. But nonetheless, it does look pretty cool, and I am very excited about having a new sniper rifle in the game. So you guys will need to jump in there and start getting your unlocks to get the new Ritek AMR. In general fixes, the team addressed an issue where players could modify weapons with attachments from other weapons while using a mouse. For those concerned about win losses, the team has fixed the multiplayer and Warzone win losses track, so that should be working as intended. As mentioned quite frequently in the update notes, the team says they have improved stability for PC players, and I have to say that stability and performance does seem to be getting better each update, although there are certain areas where certain players are having issues, particularly with their shaders and performance in certain areas within the game. But it is nice to see that the team is addressing some of the performance issues that we have here on PC. It's been a while since we've seen the team address any sort of exploit within the multiplayer maps, but nonetheless in the infected mode, the team has addressed an issue in Krovnik farmland. For those concerned that their Milsim uniforms weren't quite lining up correctly, the team did fix the view model gloves that didn't match the in-game world model. We see that the Kali sticks have now been added to all or nothing, Gun Game, Infected, and Gunfight. So if you guys want to use the Cali Sticks in those modes, you can now do so. A little fix that I kind of appreciate, and that is the long shots now display the distance in the point feed. So one of the few things I wasn't able to finish in Season 3 was getting the Juggernaut. 
but for those who were concerned, the team did fix a bug where the juggernaut HUD elements would remain on the screen if the player was crushed by a crate. If you're like me and you get the shield turret about 80% of the time when you get a care package, for those who are using the shield turret and trying to throw a grenade, the team has addressed an issue that would cause you to get stuck when you were trying to throw the grenade. A little something I should take more advantage of, and that is the deployable cover. For those who do like to use it, there was some changes to how the Molotov damage works. So basically, the deployable cover will break and the Molotov fire will disappear, but damage from the fire remains present for a duration of 20 seconds. Good news for all you guys who enjoy using throwing knives, you can now destroy recon drones. And rounding off the fixes, the hip fire reticles are now visible in spectate and in the kill cam. This will make it easier for you to tell if a player is using stopping power rounds or slug rounds. As we move into the war zone fixes, I just wanted to mention that I'm just kind of highlighting both the general and the war zone fixes. If you guys do want the point by point outline, I will leave a link to the update notes below this video. In Warzone, it would appear the team fixed an exploit in Boneyard where players could climb into the destroyed portion of a plane. A neat little feature that has been added to the gas mask, it will now crack when you're taking damage near or in the circle. A nice UI change, that is the team wiped message, now appears in the kill feed for your whole squad to see. For some players, after winning in the Gulag, you would spawn under the world. The team has now addressed that particular issue. One of the most significant changes that I'm sure many of us will appreciate, the supply chopper sound has been reduced. Finally, as the team mentions and as we are very aware, the chopper sound could be so loud we couldn't hear what was going on around us, much less any conversation we were trying to have with our squad. As we move along to some of the weapon changes, I will just highlight some of the more significant ones. That is that stopping power rounds is now applied to headshots, but for only certain weapons for the two-shot and one-shot headshots, and that'll be for the FAL and the Odin. This fixes a few cases where headshots could sometimes do less damage than body shots when using stopping power rounds. The team has made a few adjustments to the start ammo and max ammo adjustments. We see an increase to the max ammo for the M4.48 SOCOM rounds. They also increased the max ammo and start ammo for the Growl using the M67 rounds, as well as the SKS 10 round mags, the Striker 45 hollow point rounds, the SCAR default mags, and the Odin default mags. Interestingly, the AX50 has had its damage range increased. I have just recently started using the AX50 and it felt like it kind of lacked a little bit. I do like the way the gun performs, but now of course that we have the newest sniper rifle, I'll probably go ahead and start getting the unlocks for the new Ritek. As far as my favorite sniper rifle in the game, the HDR, we now have a guaranteed one hit to lower torso at any range. As we have been anticipating and has been introduced in the 1.23 update, that's going to be the nerf to the MP5 and the growl. As far as the MP5, they decrease the damage range. They decrease the damage range for the 10 millimeter ammo as well as reduce the long range damage for the 10 millimeter ammo and they introduced a slight recoil to the 10 millimeter ammo and for many people's favorites at least within warzone the 556 the damage range has been reduced there has been a slight increase to the high frequency recoil to know how much recoil that is of course we'll have to get into the game and find out and they reduced the recoil compensation and decrease range of the tempest 26.4 inch barrel as well as the archangel and the fss 20.8 inch nexus barrel in addition to weapon changes there were several to the shotgun slugs as well as for those who like to run the no stock attachment the team has increased the weapon recoil and decreased the ads aiming steadiness now i have kind of moved away from using the no stock but wow that's quite an interesting change to the no stock fans out there but nonetheless guys that's kind of the highlight of some of the weapon changes that we have here in the 1.23 update and rounding off the notes, we have the Special Operations and Special Operations Survival fixes and adjustments. I would encourage you guys to click on the link below this video for the update 1.23 notes. That way you guys will get all the details and it is quite extensive. And I just wanted to highlight some of those because the notes are quite long. 
But nonetheless, guys, that is going to wrap it up for this look at the 1.23 updates. I want to thank all you guys for your continued participation here on the channel. If you are watching this on DTube or BitChute, I would encourage you guys to give me a follow there. And if you are here on YouTube, of course, that would be the channel icon appearing there, right there on the screen to subscribe, as well as notifications. That way you guys will have all the latest news out of Infinity Ward, Call of Duty Modern Warfare, Call of Duty Warzone, and of course, Call of Duty Plunder.